Our guest today is Miss Debbie Jarrett. She has been an MC for more than 35 years. She's a resident of Central Florida, and Miss Debbie is a writer, a poet, a motivational speaker, an event planner. She's also an actress and has a passion for music. She is currently in the process of writing a book and studying to become a life coach. So welcome, Miss Debbie, to CRR Network. It's a pleasure. So, Miss Debbie, you describe yourself as a daughter of Montego Bay, Jamaica, Brooklyn, New York, and Boston, Massachusetts. Tell us more about your connection to each of those places. Oh, I would love to. First, I just want to say God is good. God works in mysterious ways or better ways. Indeed. So... Once I was born, actually, in Stewart, Florida, to Jamaican parents, Hyacinth Thompson and Clifford Janet. They were unable to take care of me, so at three months, I was sent to Montego Bay to two wonderful parents. Talk about the village that raises a child, indeed. Amen. My birth mother was finishing nursing. My dad uh, was in Saskatoon attending med school. He became a cardiologist, so he was really busy. <laughs> so, raised in Montego Bay to Matt, with Madge and Herbert Kevin, and they taught me during my formative years how to love, how to live, how to laugh, how to inspire, they taught me about philosophy and all things positive. So, um, mommy, I, I remember her now, she's gone, but um, she always said, Listen, my pick me over there. <laughs> yeah, manager, you know, she's just a free spirit, she's full of lyrics. She had to get that, yeah, just let her run free. But I had to have manners, that's and right, discipline. But she they allowed me to be the free spirit you see today. So, um, Lovely. moving on. Thank okay. you. All right. Moving on. Sorry. I had to move to Brooklyn. Oh, uh, you, so I moved to Brooklyn. <laughs> Pardon me? No, I was going to say that you are truly a woman of diverse cultures, but I know how very proud you are of your Jamaican heritage and culture. So yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yes, so moving on to Central Florida in 1986, you dedicated your time to raising your family and working as a legal assistant. What has been your experience in that field, in the legal field? Well, I'd like to talk a little bit about um, when I came to Central Florida, uh, I was married and became a mom. So I was a working mother. And okay. that was challenging, as was for most working mothers. My yeah. husband at the time was in school, and one day, and I'm running back and forth, you know, the law firm, very busy law firm, and uh, my son said to me, Mommy, you buy good food because Chef Ronald McDonald was my chef. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I felt so, I felt so guilty Joey. Yes. I started cooking and making a way for my kids to have home cooked meals. I just had that in there. Good. Then <laughs> as far as the law firm, I worked within the hospitality industry. I started as a receptionist there though. And I just want to say being a receptionist is one of the most important roles in a law firm because you're representing the firm. Yes. With your level of professionalism and based on that Deals are made or not made. So it's how you carry yourself. Yes. Again, I attribute that to all my parents who instilled that in me. So then I was promoted um, within the hospitality industry as a legal assistant. And there I was able to be an event planner, which I totally enjoyed amongst other legal duties. And one of the things I carry from the law firm till this day mm -hmm. is the essence of confidentiality. 
Yes. I'm very good on that. Yes. Um, just don't know who you're talking to. You have to be respectful of people's privacy. Obviously, yeah? yes. And I, yeah. I can just imagine that your being a legal professional is what makes you so professional. I noticed that. And, and you understand <laughs> protocol. You know, so I think, yes, that has definitely taught you those things, I believe. So thank you so much. So interesting. Now, you have been an MC, I learned, for more than 35 years. Wow. And you are known for your professional yet fun persona. Just tell us about some of the very diverse events you've had and where you've served as an MC, Absolutely. I'd like to acknowledge my cousin, Lori, who saw that in me before I did. Uh -huh. And she asked me to MC her wedding of 500 people wow. um, in the Disney area. And I said, are you crazy? Mm. And she said, yes, you do, cousin, and you're going to do it. So I did it. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so much fun. And I realize that when I hear music, that is my inspiration. I just speak. I don't look at script. I just speak. Yes. I notice. Oh, we're gonna get to that. <laughs> so I just want to say, from um, that wedding, talk about networking. Mm -hmm. Many, many offers to do other weddings at um, bat mitzvahs, bar mitzvahs. Buddhist weddings, um, you know, YouTube is a great teacher. I learned Japanese in two weeks. Nice. And all the other words. <laughs> so, you're uh, maybe sad, but funerals, I like to say uh, they're more of a celebration of life. And always trying to encourage people to cheer them up because God has put us here on earth, but it's not the final frontier. So I encourage people to live in love, to move on to eternal life. So I do funerals, I write eulogies and things like that when people ask me to. So I write for other people as well. Wonderful. You really got, got me stumped at that 500 guests, your sister's mm -hmm. wedding? My wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, your cousin, that's right. That's a lot. I was nervous. <laughs> That's all I, I bet. Once I heard the music, I was fine. <laughs> <laughs> Just give you some good music and you're good. Yeah. Well, that's so wonderful. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what you've shared just now is, to me, it's very intriguing and it sounds like so much fun, though, you know, to yeah. be able to do that and especially for your family member as well. Excellent. Thank you. Now, you were a speaker at the, the launch of the Jamaican Museum and Cultural Center in Atlanta, Georgia. I think that was in September of 2021, and participants included the Honorable Olivia Babsey Grange, um, the Honorable Grange. Oliver Mayer, and various dignitaries and musicians and poets and dancers. Would you mind telling us some more about that? Oh, Absolutely, my pleasure. I'm so grateful to them for having given me that opportunity. Met my cousin, uh, Christine Marzuka, and Dr. Apollo Reed reached out to me. They needed a they needed a sexologist, mm -hmm. and I suggested a very well known sexologist from Jamaica called Howard Foles, a personal friend of mine, who also. Um, gave a special tribute to my mother at her celebration of life. One week before the launch of the museum, Howard died, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And he was well known in Jamaica, so they reached out to me to ask for a tribute to Howard Foles. Okay. And I had to hold back the tears. I just said what I had to say from the heart. And uh, that's how I was on in my capacity. Wow, that, that, that's really awesome, you know, um, to be able to be there to speak at that launch, though. You know, that, that was a very, very honored um, thing for you to be asked to do. So that must have been a very, very proud moment for you. For me, can, can you tell us? a personal yeah. act 
came from the heart. I was humbled. Yes. I was grateful. Mm -hmm. And I was ready to do what God wanted me to do. Yes. Amen. Yes, you are yourself, and we love that about you. All right. Wonderful. Thank you. Miss Debbie, you are a woman of so many talents. I can't say all of them, honestly, but you are a writer and a poet, a motivational speaker, an event planner, a singer, I found out, and an actress. I said, wait. <laughs> Furthermore, <laughs> sorry. Furthermore, you are in the process of writing a book and um, becoming certified as a life coach. Oh my gosh. Where do you find the time? Where do you find the energy? And can I have some, please? Sure. It's at the supermarket. I will ensure. Oh my goodness. Okay. Seriously, I have to give God all that glory. Oh, yes, amen. It's whoever we are as individuals, he created us as such. So I believe that. I pray when I, I have to make sure to get my rest. And I get my energy from prayer and positive thinking. I am a woman of self-fulfilling prophecy. Your words are important. So I don't think I can't do it. I say it has already been done. Yes, amen. How you talk to yourself is essential. It, it's so important. Right. Because your body listens and then you produce. It's, just, it's a cycle. So. Yes, and I guess you've learned to balance your time well as well, right? I, I have. I have. Um, my friend Karen Moon will tell you that yes. I, I will say I'm off the grid. <laughs> I'm off the grid. I turn off my phone. Uh huh. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Now, I don't know if you would want to answer this question, but can you tell us a little bit about, you don't have to tell us about the book. I understand that. But some of the things that, that um, as far as being a writer and a poet and some of those things that you've done that you can share. Of course. That I'm, thanks for understanding. I'm saving some of the essence. I of understand. The I surprise. understand. Yes, <laughs> that element of but surprise. Also, yeah. Yes, I'm also very happy um, you asked that question. As far as being a writer, yes. From I was at what we call infant school in Jamaica. Yes. They the teachers told my mom that um, I'm a writer because uh, I was writing from I was a little girl. Right. Uh, when everyone was outside playing, I was inside writing. Mm. And I noticed that the words started to rhyme. Okay. And I noticed that from observation, I would just write poetry. Yeah. Yes. So it's, it's a gift from God. Amen. And I believe that when we get gifts from God, we are to share them with others. Because if I touch one person with a poem, that inspires them. I'm happy. I agree. Happy. I agree. We should cherish the gift, but we should also share it. I totally Absolutely. agree. Yes. Now, you know, Miss Debbie, I'm so happy to have met you and gotten to know you. And I love your energy and your vibe, as we say in Jamaica, is infectious. <laughs> it really is. So much. And so is yours, Miss Joanna. Oh, Joanna. thank you. You inspire me as well. Amen. Now, I have to give you time for this one because you are a member of the Jamaican Cultural Connection. So I want to give you some time to talk about your connection with the association and why it's so important to you. Oh, I hope I don't cry. Oh. <laughs> well, it's really personal to me. Yes. First, I want to give a big shout out and love to my Dear friend Karen Rowan, who is on yes. the board of executives for the Jamaican Cultural Connection, JCC, as we call it. And I am convinced that becoming a part of JCC was indeed God's divine intervention. Because 
from 2016 to 2018, I was going back and forth taking care of my aunt and mom in Montego Bay. And one year I came back and I was so disheartened, so lonely, so sad. And I got a phone call from Karen, who didn't know anything about what was going on. Yes. And she says, hey, Dad, do you want to come to a party? And by, by the time she hung on the phone, I, I was dressed. <laughs> I was ready to go. <laughs> That's lovely. And there I met Jason C. I, um, it was a New Year's Eve party, and I met them. Then Karen invited me again to their official Heroes Banquet event. That's in October. Yes. And there I met people. When I walked in, you know, I felt this sense. By that time, Mom had gone on to eternal life, and I had a void. And mm. JCC filled that void within me as far as Wonderful. family. I don't look at them as an organization. I look at them as family. Yes. Then as I learned about them, uh, Claudia Bailey was the founder. And she passed on. And the way they uphold Claudia Bailey's vision of cultural connection really warmed my heart. Good. Because I feel the Caribbean is a trunk of a tree. And the branches are different organizations. So that's my analogy of that. And JCC, as I said, they're my family. I enjoy working with them and I thank them. I wasn't yet a member and they asked me to MC their Heroes events last year at Maison Jardin. And it was eloquent, elegant, fun, everything, and I enjoyed it and seeing Yes, I enjoyed it too. Yes, it was um, lovely. Yes, and that's when, I, that's when I met you. Yes, yes, I believe that was yeah. the first time we met. And, and, we, and then at the Barbados um, event is when we really mm -hmm. got a chance to talk more. Yes, um, yes. lovely. But um, I love their... You know, Miss Paulette's vision was for us to intermingle and connect as a culture, Jamaican culture. Yes. And it's, uh, we strive to empower our citizens to come together in cultural unity and connectivity to educate, train, build, and enhance the quality of life for the less fortunate in our local and Jamaican communities. So as we elevate, to um, Ms. Quota's visions, I am honored to be a part of JCC. Excellent. And, um, I'd like to send love out to Ms. Rosemary, our current president, Ms. Lorna Franklin, our president-elect, Karen, um, uh, the Mitchells, Robert Young, Paulette Nurse, and the list goes on and on. They're just family. Wonderful. And I'd like to say I wish you and all the members of the Jamaican Cultural Connection continued success. As a sister organization of the Jamaican American Association of Central Florida, I would say that you're also an, not just a sister, but an offspring. As you know, um, Miss Claudette was one of our members and uh, she left and, and started that wonderful association. So I hope we can learn to work together more to lift and promote our Jamaican culture and the Jamaican diaspora, you know, as family, you know, two sets of family. Okay? So thank can you I, for can that. Can I just say something there? Yes, indeed. When I was, um, I felt it in my spirit. I said, we need to intermingle Yes. One, we all have our different purposes and missions and yes. visions. However, there's no reason we can't all get along. Exactly. In love and I agree. So, yeah. Um, we are family. 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 We are family. Well, yes. I agree. Mm -hmm. Oh, go ahead. Okay. I want to send out a happy, happy birthday and a happy Women's International Women's Month to all the queens, but especially Queen 
Miss Mia Almond, whose birth was yesterday. Yes. A very special milestone. She was 60. Yay! And I was big happy up! To be a part of you. Big up, big up, big up. <laughs> and I was so happy to be a part of that. And as I looked around at all of us, I saw that intermingling when you speak about Miss Joan. Yes. I saw sisterhood. I felt the love. I felt the energy. And when I looked at Mia, she's so humble. And yes. she, I, she's really gifted as being a visionary. When yeah. she envisioned and created women of culture, I looked around and said, we are women of culture. Look at yes. this. Loving, sharing, uplifting, fulfilling, all in the positive way. So I just yes. want to thank you for that. And in, in, indeed also, Ribbon of Survivors is another um, association, yeah. another, well, what would you call it, foundation, or that she mm -hmm. also started, you know, and that's how I got to know her from, from being sick, oh, having oh, cancer, yeah. and my daughter also got to know her through those things. So yes, wow. she, she really does have a vision for, for things to help others. You know, her heart is to how, you know, when she was sick and she, she's a survivor, a strong survivor, and she's like, well, how can I motivate someone else? And I love people like that, you know? So, I, I do yes, yes. So God I, bless, I do, I God bless her. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. All righty. Uh, we still have some more time, so I want you to um, tell us some more about anything that you may want to add before we actually close this interview, because I know you still have a lot to share. I have a lot to share, and I'm sharing it in my book. I'm doing two books, actually. Okay. One about my life. Okay. And as it says in the Bible, for every, you know, there's a season for everything, for everything there is a season. Yes. And I don't share my... I don't like the word problems, I like the word challenges. Because I feel that when you're down in the valley, I always say God gives us privatism so that we can move up the top. And right. then we're going to go back down and we're supposed to learn something else and go back up. And that's just the circle of life. How Amen. I envision. Yes. The um, yes. And, and not, I'm go sorry. ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. You go ahead. As one of the things I wrote, Mm -hmm. um, intention and yeah. perception need clarification. I don't like this word, Ms. Joan, and I like people to get along, and half the time they don't get along is because of a simple misunderstanding. Yes. As we will say back in Jamaica, it no even goes up. Right. <laughs> and so, if, yeah, you're I, right. It's, I just want to say, if we would just call each other sometimes and just talk mm -hmm. things out rather than talking behind someone's back or making yes. snide comments, sarcastic comments and mm -hmm. texts. You know, just, just call and say, let's talk this out. You're right. The world would be a yes. much better place. Yes. Yeah. And, and again, for Women's Month, I would like to expound to the queens, there's a saying, fix each other's crowns mm. and don't talk about it. Amen. Don't drag, don't drag them down. Mm. Fix them. Powerful, and yes. Michelle, yeah, Michelle Obama made a comment. She said, when you go through the door of success, you do not close it mm. in the face of the person behind you. You pull them through. Amen. So I agree with that. That stuck with me, yes. Some of us slam it. <laughs> slam the door. We don't just close it. <laughs> yeah, man. They slam the door. And, and if they see you succeeding, it bothers them. I mean, why? Why? I don't know. This is all in my book. To oh. motivate people. Because yes. I went through some challenging times. And through those challenging times... I learned to heal. I'm, I'm leaving out some of how I did this for the book. But I learned to heal. And I felt this need to give back. I said, okay, God through me. Let me go out there and teach other people. So I became a motivational speaker over in the Dr. Phillips area. Yes. Um, to men and women um, of different um, 
challenges that they face, even men that were abused, men get abused too. Yes, I know. So it's, so it's about helping each other because we're yes. strong as our weakest link. Amen. So Amen. So, Wonderful. I give her God all the glory. Amen. Always. So thank you so much, Miss Debbie. I am so thankful to you for sharing, for opening up your heart to us and, and, and talking to us. Thank you very much for coming on. May God continue to bless you in all your endeavors. Because I know there's the greatness in you is yet to come. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Praise Thank you, the Lord. Thank you. I send you love. I send you joy. I send you positive energy. This Amen. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you.